So music is part of our DNA. Rock and roll is part of our DNA. Thank you all for joining this cause. Um, it's a very, very beautiful cause. I personally know so many people affected by it and so many people that our organization has helped and now you are a part of that as well. So today we're gonna have fun and we're gonna help others through the joy of music. We have our, our special guest, of course, Jonathan Kane of Journey. We have Broadway singer, Al Calderon. We have our Play It Back artists as our special guests. Our Play It Back songs program is one of the most um, amazing and beautiful programs that we offer at Teen Cancer America. And we also have a special message from our co-founder of the Who's Roger Daltrey. Um, we have a raffle and donation page, which will be linked for you in the chat. Um, our uh, raffle tonight is a bottle of Finale wine signed by Jonathan Kane himself, which he has gifted us. But if you want to purchase flat out a bottle of wine signed by Jonathan Kane, you can also purchase that on the bundle link, which will be in the chat as well. So these pages, like I said, will stay open till the end of the month. Keep that in mind. And let's get ready to taste some wine and sing along. Obviously, there's a lot of us that are going to be joining tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so happy you're here. I'm going to go ahead and introduce. Ferdi Musarino, our sommelier of the evening. Hi, Ferdi. Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you. Let's get to tasting our wine. We're going to taste the whites first, right? Absolutely. We're going to take a little, we're going to take a, a good journey through wine. <laughs> so we're going to go from... Uh, we're going to start in Spain, then we're going to uh, move up north to France, then we're going to take a nice trip overseas to uh, California and then back to France. That's awesome. Uh, so everyone get out your white wines, um, you know, open the bottles. But first, uh, and Jonathan will be joining us later, we also have some awesome songs that he has sent us just for this audience tonight, which we'll be listening to throughout the evening. Um, so our first song that we'll be listening to for the night is one of Journey's most famous love songs and a power ballad from 1981, Open Arms. And this one's from Jonathan Cain himself. Hi, it's Jonathan Cain from Journey. I'm back here with uh, Teen Cancer America. This is a song I wrote with Steve Perry when I first joined the band back in 1981. <coughs> it was a wedding song that I had originally written for my wife and I shared it with Steve and he helped me finish the song. This one goes out to all of you. Ten 
Love that song. That was so beautiful. What'd you think, Brady? Oh, I love it. I love it. You you cannot love Jonathan Kane's voice and his talent on the piano. I, I get, it gets me really excited. Yeah. But I'm excited about the first wine. What about you, Lily? Me too. Yeah, of course. I'm always excited about wine. So we're tasting the Terra Sara Verdejo from Spain. You know what I love about a Spanish white? What is it? I, I love how unique they are. So if you walk through a wine shop, you always find like a Chardonnay, a Pinot Grigio, a Sauvignon Blanc from different parts of the world. But yeah. Spanish whites are so unique to Spain. So you have to either buy them imported from Spain or you have to travel to Spain to taste them because they only grow in Spain. So that's that's already like something very unique and exciting when I, when I see a Spanish white. And this one in particular, Verdejo, yeah. is is only grown in a region called Rueda, which is a little north of Madrid. Mm -hmm. And it's been cultivated there since the 11th century AD. It was brought there by the Mozarabs people from, from, uh, from North Africa. So that's a very unique grape. And something that's very special about this grape, they, they call it Verdejo, first off, because it means like the little green. Because if you look at these grapes, they're almost lime green, uh, uh, super bright, this electric green, and, and it makes these wines, uh, which are really like, they're fresh, they're vibrant. Um, so let, let's taste it together, because this is very exciting. And I want to hear from people at home, from our guests, what they're tasting, if they're tasting, if they're getting our same tasting notes. Because when I smell this wine, it smells a lot like white fruits, like pear, like, um, like yellow apple, sweet lemons. And then there's this lovely nutty flavor, like, like toasted almonds or toasted hazelnuts. Wow, isn't it delicious? It's really good. That's really, really good. There's nice acid to it. It makes your it makes your mouth salivate. And there's also a creamy component to it, which I associate a creaminess with the aroma of the toasted hazelnuts. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely get that. I definitely get the creamy and the hazelnutty. Wow, yum. So this is this is your ideal wine if you uh let's say if you're a fan of Pinot Grigio, if you want an easygoing, approachable easy to drink white wine, this would be the wine for you. Amazing. Um, be sure to ask your questions, everyone in the chat, if you have questions um, to ask about this white wine. I have a question to start off, Ferdi, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, so when you're talking about wines from Spain, do they have a common characteristic with the grapes like this? Like, is it, are they always nutty? Are they always that, you know, lemony, zesty, whatever? That's a great, that's a great question. And I'd say that the, the common, the common thread of Spanish whites is they're always very floral, mm -hmm. very crisp, very bright. Mm -hmm. um, they, they all come from high altitude vineyards. 
So they tend to be more, they tend to be more acidic, more on a fresher side. Yeah. And it complements the Spanish yeah. cuisine so well, like, especially if you think of small bites like tapas mm -hmm. or, or, or a seafood paella, this would be ideal with that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Seafood paella. Absolutely. I know it's, it's really good. It's what I think most people would call very drinkable, right? Mm -hmm. Very easy to drink. I'll tell you my, my ideal pairing for this will be pesto. Okay. Pesto, because what's missing in this wine is a little bit of herbaceousness, which you find in other wines, which we will mm -hmm. touch on soon. But you'll find, uh, you'll find that a wine like this that has like this sweet fruit aromas and nutty, nutty aromas to complement mm -hmm. well the bitterness of basil, the creaminess mm -hmm. of the pesto. That's great. Okay, everyone, write that down. This wine you're going to want to have with some pesto tomorrow or later tonight. Whatever you're I, I hope that for many of you at home, this is your first taste of a Spanish white because this is a very nicely done Verdejo. And I hope that it opens up your horizon to new, new, uh, new shopping perspective. Oh, next time I see a white from Spain, I'm going to try it. Yeah, I think it might be mine, Verdi. And I'm like, you're totally selling me on it. I love it. This is a really good one for sure. Um, and then the next we have the Bordon Blanc. Is that right? We do, yes. Let's let's taste the Bordeaux. One of the most, I would say, the second most planted grape in the white grape in the world is in this wine, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So this is Sauvignon Blanc from its native country, from France. And the first thing I love about this, I love a good bottle with engravings and, and all this like beautifully designed label. But if you notice right here at the bottom, it says neck pluribus impar. For those of you who don't speak Latin, that means made like no, not made like many. And this was the motto of Louis XIV, King of France, the, the sun king. It's, it's almost like a way to say, the way we make wines, no, no one can compare. And in Bordeaux, and we'll taste the red Bordeaux later on, uh, it is, a, it is a, a well known fact that the rest of the world looks to Bordeaux as an inspiration to make the highest quality wines. And I love, I'm a big fan of Sauvignon Blanc. I love crisp, citrusy, bright wines. And this wine smells like a seaside. It smells like crushed rocks, uh, fresh cut grass, grapefruit peel. Mm -hmm. Isn't it yeah. fantastic? Like it's a, it, it makes you think of everything seafood like that you could, you could pair it with. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is so yummy. Yeah, it, it smells like a day at the beach, honestly. Like mm -hmm. a, it's very bright, yeah, and fresh. Mm -hmm. I love it that what's in outside the bottle seems very elegant and sophisticated and then you're thinking of a day at the beach when yeah, you're tasting when you're tasting the wine itself so that's that's awesome it's almost like a, it crosses between uh between different worlds but let's let's taste it let's see let's see what it tastes like beautiful I think there's a, I love that bitter I love that bitterness on the finish. Do you taste mm -hmm. that bitterness? It's almost like that grapefruit juice. Yeah. Grapefruit yeah, peel, right? herbaceous. Mm -hmm. And if you can smell it, there's a component in the, there's a, a phenolic, they call it, they call the uh, the compounds of the aromas of wine. They're called phenolics. And this one is called paradzines. Hmm. And it smells like jalapeno pepper. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very green, I would say. And it, this is not a coincidence. So this, this phenolic, this parazine is present in those vegetables as well. Like you'll find the same components in grapes that are also in green bell peppers, jalapenos, fresh cut grass. So you smell it in the, in the, in the wine for a reason that's just not only well, was a sommelier say like, oh, I smell this and I smell that. It is actually in the wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally smell that for sure. And I, I thought it tasted very fruity. Maybe that's mm -hmm. the that you're talking about. And then I don't get the bitterness until like right at the end. Yes, which I the, like. fed, the, the bitterness, it's, it's something that comes at the end. And I think it helps a lot 
when food pairing so that the 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 sense that the aroma of bitterness gets you ready for a different for a new bite so that you yeah. won't something to you know take that bitterness off oh interesting um we have a question from allison rodriguez her question is why is this in a clear glass bottle rather than a green bottle a lot of white wines come in green bottles that's a great question that's a good question it's a wine that's meant to be uh uh it's meant to drink the be drink young uh, so not a lot of aging uh, requirements for this wine. So you'd usually, usually in winemaking, you use a darker bottle so that the sun will not affect exposure mm -hmm. to light or the sun will not affect the content of the bottle. Mm -hmm. But when a wine is meant to be consumed young, it, it doesn't have the amount of time that it, the, that it needs to, uh, to be affected by the sun. So you can have, you can have a clear bottle. Me personally, I want to know the color of the wine that I drink because based on the color, I could tell you a lot about a wine. I could tell you if it's going to be a fuller body, a lighter body, if there's exposure to yeah. oxygen. Uh, so a clear bottle for me, it's always a good indication of, okay, I already know if I'm going to love this wine or just like it. Hate it, almost impossible for me. Like I, it's almost impossible for me not to like a wine. Yeah. But, but I can tell you based on the color if I'm going to love it or just like it. Yeah, that's so interesting. I didn't know that you could tell that much from just the color of a wine. Um, so next we have Al Calderon. He amazingly generously provided us um, a song. Uh, he's going to be singing Any Way You Want It. And some trivia for you. This Journey song was heard in the 1980 movie Caddyshack. Any Caddyshack fans here? Um, so you might know Al Calderon from Broadway, you might know him from TikTok, from Reels on Instagram, um, but he's got a beautiful gift of a voice and we're going to listen to it now. Enjoy. How's it going everybody? My name is Al Calderon. I'm a singer, actor, songwriter, and I am so grateful to be a part of this with you today. The work that Teen Cancer America is doing for the community and for families and for teens and young adults going through cancer is, is truly, truly admirable. My mom lost her battle to lung cancer about a year and a half ago. And my dad is in remission from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I know firsthand what that looks like and how overwhelming the entire experience can be. And Everyone needs community. And I think that it is so beautiful that Teen Cancer America does just that. And I'm really honored to be a part of this. And I'm excited to sing a little cover of Any Way You Want It. And I really, really hope you enjoy. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Any way you want it. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Any way you want it She loves to laugh She loves to sing She does everything She loves to move She loves to groove She loves the love and day Oh, all night All night Oh, every night So hold tight Hold tight Oh baby, hold on tight You know she said Any way you want it That's the way you need it Any way you want it She said Any way you want it That's the way you need it Any way you want it I was alone I never knew What good love could do Oh, then we touch Then we say She 
use it anyway, anyway. That's the way. Hey, yeah. What a beautiful remix of that classic song. I absolutely loved that. Um, so yes, you might know Alec, I said from Broadway, you might know him. He was also on X Factor um, and he is actually here with us right now. Um, you can also catch his new single. It's called Heartbreak Season um, and he's going to come say hello. Al, are you here with us? I am here. Hi. How's it going? So good. I've watched that video and I have like totally stalked you on Instagram, but I'm so excited to meet you actually. <laughs> I, I'm honored. I'm honored to be, to, to be stalked. I appreciate it. Oh my God. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> oh, please. Seriously. I was super excited when uh, y'all asked me to join. So I'm really, wow. I'm really grateful. Thank you. That means a lot. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us and how you can relate to the cancer experience. Oh, of course. It's 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 an anxiety ridden uh, kind of dark alleyway that you don't know how to navigate and you kind of learn as you go. And like mm -hmm. I said, I'm like in the video, I think community is so important. And, um, you know, we're we're tr we're a tri humans are a tribal people. So we need people, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're trying to build. And hopefully this helps. Um, it seems absolutely. like you know, everyone has a cancer experience or knows someone with a cancer experience these days. So it's really Definitely. special and important that you've come. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I honor my mom's memory by doing things like this. And, and I think showing up um, for other people and other people's experiences and hearing other people's stories too is is something that I've really valued and, and found solace in almost. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a super, super helpful way to go through something like that for sure is to absolutely to other people's stories and experiences. And um, we share a lot of those through Teen Cancer America, as many as we can. And so yours makes a difference, definitely. Um, yeah. but what made you decide to uh, choose that particular song? Are you a fan of that song? Did you wanna, did you know like the second that you saw, oh, I wanna remix this? Hilariously enough, that was the one that I really loved. I'm a huge 80, 80s music fan anyway. Mm -hmm. um, like Hall & Oates is one of my favorite duos of all time. So Journey is like kind of up there as well. And I remember the first time I kind of like really, it's like when you, you hear a song and you know the song and I'm like, oh, I know this song, but I heard it when I heard it on Glee, when they did it on Glee, I think that that mm -hmm. was like, where I was like, oh, I know the song. And then, and then it, it made me kind of like really know the song. And like really I think one of my favorite, yeah. exactly. And then one of my, when I saw it, it kind of like brought back that nostalgic feeling and I kind of wanted to put my little pop r and twist on it to kind of bring a, a different perspective and version to it. Yeah, it's very much your style, right? Like that's generally the kind of style that you, like that's what Heartbreak Season is, right? Would you call that like R&B? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I definitely call it pop r and I think, you know, I was influenced a lot by incredible pop artists like Journey and like, you know, like I said, Hall & Oates. Um, and then obviously the 90s R&B and pop, Boys to Men, Brandy, all of those kinds of artists. And Justin Timberlake was like one of the reasons why that like I was inspired to be uh, in music. I remember I was in kindergarten and I would take the little CD and I would create in sync. And I was a drill sergeant and I always chose, I made everyone choose their characters. <laughs> I was Justin all the time. So um, so that kind of music, that kind of music has always been, you know, a special a special part of, of, you know, what story I like to tell. Yeah. Well, it's always great to hear songs that we know refreshed and renewed. Um, and then also to appreciate the originals. Yeah. 100%. I, I remember I, one of my, my, one of my friends who helped me produce the, the cover. Um, I, re I also remember mentioning to him that I wanted the same chords so that they felt familiar. Um, and you also, you know, can hear some of the melodies, but also experience kind of uh, a fresh take on it. 
Yeah, yeah, you pulled it off. We have um, one Thank question you. before sure. you go, if you don't mind. I'm um, baffling now. Alec, who is a survivor himself, I happen to know, um, he wants to know how does your family history with cancer now affect your relationship with your own health and does it affect your view in life? My goodness. Um, so have yeah. You it, it, yeah, no, 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 no. It honestly, I, you know, I suffer from anxiety and depression, I think, as a lot of us kind of do. And like, we don't know what that is and what that feels like. But my, my anxiety with health has like, really, I've always been super health, health conscious. My mom was always super health conscious. And on top of her, her game with that, whenever she didn't feel right, she always kind of knew what to do, where to go. And when this happened, it kind of felt like a, a, a shock, you know, and then you feel kind of helpless almost. But I think it's kind of really made me even more hyper aware of mm -hmm. my health. And, I, and, and yeah, there are anxious moments where it's like, you know, I, I suffer from asthma. So, you know cancer doesn't discriminate against any age, which is so heartbreaking. Um, and, you know, so to be in touch with your, with your health is really important. And I'm grateful for my health insurance. Um, that's a conversation for another time, but, um, I definitely have 100% more knowledge for my own health. And I, I kind of know what questions to ask for myself now that I've been through that. And I think someone that has, has been through something and has and has pushed through to the other end of it um I admire that strength because it feels really defeating and helpless and hopeless at times um yeah and I can't so even happy. imagine what that feels like mm -hmm. so huge thank you so much Al I really really appreciate you sharing that and I know everyone oh, else has too please thank you so so much I I I'm so happy that I got to connect with with you amazing hopefully we'll yeah. see you again I hope so <laughs> have a good one Thank you. Me too. Bye. How cool is that? Wow. Awesome. Um, well, on to our next wine. I know we're all excited for that. <clears throat> Birdie, welcome back. <laughs> Hi. It was, uh, I, I, uh, I had to compliment Al on his beautiful voice and his beautiful message that was really yeah. touching. So yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll toast, I'll toast to that. I'll cheers to that. Definitely. Definitely. Cheers to Al. And we're moving on to our next wine and our first of the two reds. Um, I know that most people in the world drink red wine. And uh, this is one of my personal favorite, um, one my personal favorites. When I, uh, when I moved to California, I was very intrigued by grape varietals that are only grown in California. There's very few exceptions. So the Sierra Trails Zinfandel. So Zinfandel is the grape. This is an old vine Zinfandel. So I love this wine because I can trace its journeys throughout centuries. So this is a grape that originated thousands of years ago in the Balkan area. And it had a different name, which I'm not going to pronounce because it's unpronounceable. Um, then it, it traveled throughout Eastern Europe until a group of immigrants brought it to New York State in the beginning of the 1800s with the first wave of immigrants. And this grape arrived in America with no name. It was just a cutting from somebody's vineyard. They wanted to bring something from their own place. So they brought these vines, they planted in Long Island, but it wasn't really thriving. And, and neither was the, uh, apparently neither was the family that brought these vines over. So they moved to California during the gold rush. So this grape arrived here in the 1840s. And in California, it adapted, it rediscovered itself, it changed its flavor profile completely, and it became Zinfandel, this grape that we all love. Love it. In California. And I, I know that it, it has similar... Uh, it has cousins in Europe, but they don't have the same flavor profile. So Zinfandel is a unique grape of California. I call it the California OG because it was here mm -hmm. in California from the very beginning. So there's Zinfandel being made here since 
the 1840s. Oh, wow. uh, and this is an old vine Zinfandel, which means that the plant, the vine, the grapevine that makes this, this uh, grapes is 60 to 150 years old. Wow. So you're really drinking something that comes from a special place. Like imagine having an apple from a tree that's almost 150 years old. Like there's something very magical about it. Uh, but what I love the most about Zinfandel is that Zinfandel is a easy to drink, versatile, uh, unique kind of wine. It has all the fruit you can imagine. So there's cherries, strawberries, and plums. And then there's this like chocolatey aromas and smoke is perfectly complex, but very easy. It's and you very, smell it in the wine. It smells like milk chocolate. Yeah. Raspberries, strawberries, and cherries. Mm -hmm. And then it's like <laughs> nice and soft and yummy. That's really good. Oh my gosh, yum. You know, I I first smelled it when I poured it. It was very fruity. Mm -hmm. And then I kept, you know, swirling as you were speaking. And then I mm -hmm. smelled it again and it was super chocolatey. Develops a lot of complexity with yeah. a little bit of oxygen exposure. That's that's for sure. Yeah, that's really interesting. Remember everyone to um, provide your questions in the chat. Um, we have one question here. What would you recommend to complement Zinfandel? And I have a follow-up question to that. There's white Zinfandel, there's different Zinfandels, right? So is it the same for both or? Uh, as compared to, uh, I, I, was, I was trying to look at the question. So what food would you recommend to complement Zinfandel? And then you asked the question, Lily, I couldn't hear your question, I'm sorry. Oh, it was just, you know, you have white Zinfandel. How does that compare to what we're drinking? I'll, I'll, Okay, so let me, I'll touch I'll touch on that too. So the, the food that I recommend with Zinfandel are this is to me this is comfort wine. Mm -hmm. So I would I would go with comfort food. So to me, uh, comfort food is tomato soup with a grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. That's that's comfort food. And yeah. I think it, it complements fantastically with this Zinfandel because there's a lot of acid in this wine. Yeah. That there are there are no harsh tannins, so nothing really nothing really that you need to chew. Like you don't need a big steak or um, something tough okay. to go with this wine. You can have something just comforting and delicious and decadent. So I would say everything that you consider your comfort food, even a cheeseburger, will be mm -hmm. fantastic with this wine. Okay, great. So I'm hearing cheese and more of the savory stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would not say no to this with a chocolate dessert, though, with a nice mm -hmm. dark chocolate mousse or a sacker tort. Because it is the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes okay. you want to you want to you want to match the aromas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how does that compare to our next wine? Let's move on to our next wine. I, I, I wanted to ask. I wanted to answer you with the white Zinfandel. Oh yeah, please. So white Zinfandel is not a white wine. It, white Zinfandel is a rosé wine made from Zinfandel. And then as a marketing gig in the, uh, in the 80s, they started calling um, white Zinfandel just simply a rosé made from Zinfandel. And because mm -hmm. Zinfandel is so fruity, it makes a nice and sweet rosé that you can't, you can uh, once you taste a white Zinfandel, you can't stop drinking them. They're delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's like juice, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah, but no, this is excellent. Thank you for answering that. And the next one is also a red. The next one is the king of all reds. It's not just a right. red. So we have a Bordeaux, a red Bordeaux. Just to give you, just to give you like a, a, a quick understanding of why Bordeaux are so magical for mm -hmm. as red wines is that our fa America founding fathers, they were all Bordeaux drinkers. They all have their uh, orders of Bordeaux coming straight from France that are still recorded. Uh, they were all collectors of Bordeaux. Uh, Napoleon was a drinker of Bordeaux. It's been, it, these are the wines that are used for investment purposes the wines with the longest cellar aging potential, like even 
you know, 50 to 60 years. Wow. Um, wow. So Bordeaux grows six red grapes. And if I'm now that I'm going to mention these grapes, you'll understand why I said that the entire world looks to Bordeaux and kind of try to emulate what Bordeaux does. You have Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Carmenere. So this these six grapes alone will fill every white shop, every wine shop and supermarket in the world. And you have them grown everywhere. But in Bordeaux, they are always blended together. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because Bordeaux, think of one word, if you do word association, when to me, when you say red Bordeaux, my word of association is balance. A winemaker in Bordeaux is like a chef. He has a vineyard filled with different grapes and every year they pick the grapes that they think will make a perfectly balanced red wine. Oh, wow. So for that reason, for that reason, no two Bordeaux are alike. So mm -hmm. no different vintages are alike. The one that you grow, your next door neighbor will grow a, the same grapes in the same year and make a different wine because it's all about how the winemaker interprets the season. Interesting. So when you drink a Bordeaux, like for example, this is a 2019 mm -hmm. Cote de Borg. So this is exactly what the year should have been represented according to the winemaker. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, had I a... said, when I said balance, uh, when you smell this wine, you have a great balance of fruity and savory aromas. So you smell fruit, but at the same time, you also smell vanilla, dust, earth, bay leaf, yeah. things like savory vegetal elements. And it's a good thing that it smells like dust, right, Ferdy? It about. does, yes, it is, it is, it is. There <laughs> it are certain things, there are certain things that us wine lover mentioned, uh, even for me, even when I say earth, like nobody wants to eat earth, but that smell, it's kind of like very pleasant when it's next to a cherry, strawberry, or something That's fruity true. like that. Of course, yeah, the earthy smell, absolutely. Um, okay, we have one question for you. Each wine has different notes. So what influences the notes the most? The grape, the barrel, or is it the way the winemaker blends it? That is a, that is a very excellent question. Um, and I'm going to answer that by explaining um, what I think, what I think, influence a wine flavor, the ultimate, like you know, the resulting flavor, what's in your glass, is called terroir. Okay. And terroir is a French word, and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean the 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 location, but it means a sense of place. Um, it's a combination of the soil in which the grapes are grown. So, for example. Grapes that are grown on limestone compared to volcanic soil as compared to clay produce a different kind of fruit. Okay. Then the grape varietal itself, they're all different. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather of the place, a place that has a lot of fog, for example, will have grapes that have thicker skin because they need to protect themselves from the, from the, from the, uh, from the coolness of the fog or grapes that are susceptible to hot winds need to develop a thicker skin mm -hmm. uh, versus grapes that are in, the, uh, in a very cool climate, they have, to have, they have to have some lighter skin so they can absorb some of that water in the morning. And then the winemaker's intervention. So how the winemaker decides um, to make the wine. So the, uh, everything combined, forms this term that is terroir. And I think the terroir is what defines the smell of a wine. A wine that is made with a formula in a way like almost like, a, uh, almost like fruit or vegetables that are grown in a greenhouse. So under no uh, external influences are mm -hmm. monotones. They always taste a particular way. When a wine if offers you something different each year, and something different each from each grape varietals, it shows you terroir. 
it shows your sense of belonging. So, and if you're from the place, then you'll smell that and it, re- it will remind you of home. For example, I, I get that from Italian wines. Like when I smell Italian wines, I get reminded of childhood memories, like of places yeah. that I walk to or things that I smell. And now this, for example, the Sierra Trails from California reminds me a lot of places like Paso Robles or Lodi. Uh, they are nice and hot and blistery warm. And this that's what that wine reminds me of. And yeah. that's their water. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That that's super interesting. I had never heard that word before. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for coming. Ferdy, you're always so knowledgeable and you make everything so easy to understand. You've taught me so much over the course of the this day. <laughs> thank you so much, Lily. It's always a pleasure yeah, talking yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure being with you. Bye, Cheers. A good one. Cheers. Awesome. So next we have some very, very special guests. So enjoy some music, enjoy some wine. We've tasted about four wines now. Um, pour yourself a glass of whatever you enjoyed the most or the second most. Um, our first song is a song from our dear advocate, Alyssa Gomez. She is a cancer survivor. She's in our Play It Back music program. And she's going to be singing Who's Crying Now, accompanied by our Play It Back program manager, Kenley Mattis. Um, and then you'll get to hear another beautiful Jonathan Kane rendition of Faithfully. Um, and that is actually credited as the greatest power ballad ever recorded. So you have that to look forward to. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Kenley Mattis from Play It Back. I'm a Play It Back producer and co-creator. We are excited to be here for you today. Hi, my name is Alyssa Gomez. I am a Play It Back artist with Teen Cancer America. We're big Journey fans and big Jonathan Kane fans, and we're going to sing to you our favorite Journey song. Desire, wonder who's crying. 
Hi, I'm Jonathan Kane from Journey, and it's truly an honor to be here for Teen Cancer America. We'd like to thank everybody here for supporting the organization and everybody that supported the music of Journey, my band. I'd like to start with a song that I wrote on a late night bus trip, 1982. It was a long tour. We all missed our loved ones the same way. We pay a price for the life we live. So today I'd like to dedicate this to all the families that have to be apart from each other. The sad goodbyes. The long visits in the hospital. This is for you.
That's so beautiful. And I'm so grateful personally for that amazing rendition from Jonathan just for Teen Cancer America. And um, I know that everyone else is here as well. And we're in for a very, very special treat tonight because Jonathan is here with us. Jonathan. Hey. Hey. Hi. I'm Lily. I'm, I'm from Teen Cancer America. Hey, we're so uh we're so honored to be part of this. Uh, cancer is such a wicked thing. And uh, my father passed from it. And uh, I am uh, honored to be uh, support the foundation, all that are here tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Can you start your video? Are you uh, able to? Well, I'm trying. I'm like, having a little difficulties here. We all, we're yeah. all challenge here let's see um i know me as well unfortunately but yeah thank you so much for coming and thank you for sharing those beautiful videos with us um family emergency uh my brother is uh my my brother is suffering and uh he's uh yeah it's uh it's a tough thing and he called me and i, I prayed for him and he uh, he's in a bad way so, you know, I, I had to deal with a family emergency tonight. Yeah. I, I, I believe no, our, our hearts go out to him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, thank you for taking time out of that to come and be with us for this. Well, in, this in, in, the end, in the end, it was uh, unforeseen. And, you know, he called me and he was uh, beside himself. He's, uh, yeah, he's going through therapy. He had a hip replacement. It was just some weird stuff that, it was, it kept escalating, got weird and worse and worse and worse. So, um, but he's, you know, we're praying, we're yeah. praying for a miracle for him. And uh, uh, that's, that's the way the enemy does it. He just like wants to attack you, you know. And, and we uh, in the cancer community, yeah, we definitely know how it can be. It feels like it's one thing after. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really. Care. And you're yeah. in Apopka, Florida. Is that right? Yeah, so I'm in Apopka, and I'm in Apopka, and uh, it's a beautiful night. We're looking okay. at a little thunderstorm here, but um, I'm sorry, I I got on a call with him, and he uh, I prayed for him. Uh, he is in a lot of pain. Uh, he has like crazy, um, crazy stuff happened to him. The same way, you know, all all, all the cancer patients have crazy stuff that just comes, you know, and you're like, wow, um, that shouldn't happen to, you know, a good person, but it does. And um, so I prayed for him and uh, I had to spend some time with him. Um, and so hopefully he'll get better, but um, it was my honor to be part of this. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and so, yeah, we, we all, our hearts go out to him. And again, thank you for that. Um, so guests, everyone show your love for Jonathan for coming, uh, in the chat, please. Oh my goodness. In the middle of a family emergency. We so appreciate you. Um, and yeah. Jonathan, are you still up to sharing about your wine? Are you still up to sharing for the cause? Yeah, no, I, um, I don't know why I don't have audio uh, video i can't figure out why yeah you did yeah. just just now um and i see that dennis is also on if you two want to come on together and just talk about how the, your wine partnership came to be for finale wines well yeah i honestly dennis dennis had an emergency to, today to dennis you want to share with uh the viewers of what you've been through is he there? Is Dennis there? He is, but he's muted. Just a second. Let's see if we can unmute him. I know it's a technology thing, right? Oh, it always just takes a How second. How does that? Is that working? That's perfect, Dennis. Are we okay? Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Dennis de la Montaña of de la Montaña Vineyards and Wineries. So um, Friday, I was having chest pains, and I, my son insisted I go to the hospital. And I said, no, I don't want to go. And he said, he gave me a choice. He goes, you're going and you only choice you have is tell me which hospital you're going to. It turns out that um, I went in and uh, pulmonary embolisms in my lungs and um, the doctors were grateful that I came in and, and, and in a time I did because it's obviously a very dangerous thing. And I, um, 
<clears throat> was able to get treatment. But unfortunately, through the process, they tested me and I have COVID too. So um, they don't know if the COVID gave me the pulmonary embolism, or not, but they think maybe it did. Yeah. I have to feel okay. I just got released from hospital a couple hours ago. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting by, um, by actually one of the vineyards in which the, uh, the wine's produced from and at my home. And uh, I'm grateful to be here and, and uh, I'm grateful to feel as what a yeah you're a miracle yes yeah. thank you so much for coming dennis holy cow so again everyone if we could show some love to dennis and jonathan they have been through the ringer today and they're still here for our cause amazingly so thank you so much dennis we really 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 appreciate you being here to talk in, about your wine in terms of our relationship john and i met probably i don't know 15 16 17 years ago uh, yep. he came in Eastern room and and he was um, attracted to his wine and or to our wines and I was uh, we set up a set a conversation up we found out we had a lot in common Jonathan probably has one of the most sophisticated palates of any any of the people that <laughs> he's really? tasted all over he's tasted every time he or he tastes wine he tastes the wine from all over the world there isn't anything he hasn't tried he is he is he is he's, he's an absolute master at wine profiles and you know we uh collaborated collaborated with him to produce a, a, a some various different wines and and um over the years and the wines we brought to this to this to this um to this event is our is our uh, is our rosé which is a, a malbec um a malbec zinfandel rosé and that's a that's a wine that all these wines are produced here at my winery in Healdsburg, California. Very small boutique wine that we only produce 5,000 cases total. All, all the vineyards are state vineyards. In, in other words, we, we grow all the fruit in which, uh, which the wine is produced from. You know, we're, we're very proud of these wines. And, and these all wines are wines that John helps blend with us. He's very, very integral in, 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 in putting these wines together. And we are thrilled to be able to present them to, uh, you know, to Teen Cancer. A, a good portion of the proceeds from the sale of these wines go to Teen Cancer. We're very proud of that. Yeah. And John, do, do you want to add some stuff to that? Um, you know, I met Dennis uh, about 18 years ago. Uh, and we have this wonderful thing called barrel tasting. And, you know, I've always had a passion for wine. And I love Dennis's wine immediately. He loved my music. And it was uh, a mutual admiration uh, society where, you know, he loved, he loved what I did and I love what he did. And that's what God does. He puts people together and God makes a connection, you know. And I, I think that Dennis and I have a, have, have a, a a connection from God, and and we started doing stuff for Make a Wish. Uh, we raised we love them. lots of lots of lots of money for yeah, Make a Wish, and then we we decided we just carry it on and 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 create the brand finale. So that's what we did, and um, you know Make a Wish is so important in the Bay Area, um, and we we knew that right away. And we recognized it and I thought, well, if we can do something for the kids, then we will. And, and, uh, and so we did and, and God blessed it. And, and we're still here today to talk about yeah, it. And you got connected to us, which we're so grateful for. It's so wonderful that you got connected to us um, <clears throat> who also serve teens and young adults with cancer and um, that you're able to reach our audiences and our supporters with this amazing wine. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the wine itself, Dennis, Jonathan? Do you have yeah. our, our first go wine ahead, that Dennis. we're going to be tasting is the rosé? Well, Dennis, go ahead. Um, you're much better at describing these wines. We, you know, we're we're very proud of the wines that we we produce um, because when you talk about being handcrafted, these are. I you know I go out, my crew goes out in the vineyards. We pick the grapes we want to that we want to utilize in the, in the, in the wine, we pick the barrels. So there's a, there's a lot of love that goes into it, to each bottle of wine. Um, we're intimately have an intimate relationship with them. We also know that, that um, we could talk about berries and cherries and fruit and different components, but we know that wine is something that's, that's absolutely shared with friends. It's shared with a, um, and, and it has, it tends to have a, a much more desirable, much more attractive uh, flavor and, uh, and uh, when you're with uh, people you love and, and friends that you're with. And so we, we like to produce a, a wine that is, um, 
that's uh, that's very very easy on a palate that um, that uh, that joins people together and uh, and puts a smile on people's face. And Jonathan, you could probably talk to you about the two wines in terms of their flavor profile. Yours, you uh, well, you're honestly, you know, living in Florida uh, in the hot weather, where it's uh, you know we're we're temperate climate here, rosé you know, really came on my radar and, and we weren't actually doing a rosé and I just felt like, uh, you know, Dennis said, well, I have this idea and he, he crafted this thing out of the Malbec uh, and he sent me a case and I was in love with it. And uh, it's a beautiful wine. Um, and, you know, rosé is a wine that is, is probably uh, underrated I think as far as, you know, a great, uh, a great choice, you know, in the afternoon if for lunch and, you know, it, it's a wonderful uh, conversation wine. And it's one of those, I say, rate rosé all day. That's what I say. You can rosé all day and, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Finale rosé is absolutely extraordinary. And I've, I'm living proof. I, I think I've had half a bottle tonight, but uh, I'm really happy. So it makes you happy. And if wine can make you happy on a Sunday night, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, especially after what you've been through. So let's taste our rosé, everyone, if you haven't tasted it already. Come on, let's sip. Mm -hmm. one, one quick quick comment on the rosé. It is it is a dry wine, believe it or not. Your taste, it, it kind of has sweetness, but that's the fruit in the, yeah. in the grape. Um, but it is a dry wine. It's a, more of a Provence style uh, wine, um, which is traditional French uh, um, rosés. So, um, yep, I don't have any. I can't drink. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's okay. Hopefully, you know what it Rosé. Like. I say rosé all day. Okay. Rosé all day. Love it, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. I would say it's very easy on the palate and exactly everything that you promised it would be. And you know what? I, I would say to all the young wine drinkers, anyone that's a young wannabe wine drinker, you must start here. This is where you start to enjoy wine. And so um, honestly, it's the best, uh, I would say, starter wine. Enjoy it. You know, have it have it for lunch or dinner and you know it goes great with everything you know turkey and chicken and and pork and you could have it with salad it's a wonderful salad wine um, it's very light on the palate and uh, it won't make it won't make you crazy you know so that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good thing yeah for a young wine drinker definitely. you won't it won't make you crazy in your head you'll you'll enjoy it and, and I wish that, they would put that on the label. That would be really helpful if they would put that on the label. Yeah, that you you will. Um, it's a great it's a great uh, introduction to to wine uh, in general. I would awesome. say. Thank you. And then tell us about your Pinot Noir. This is the Pinot Noir Sonoma Coast Chancon 2018 that we have here to taste. Well, so Chancon Chancon yeah, means so. Uh, the Chancon is a French introductory dance um, that we, we decided to make all everything musical. And, and in France, that's what they did. They had this introduction dance. It was a waltz and they would play it and uh, people would uh, get introduced uh, to this lovely, uh, you know, they come to the party and, and, and I think the Pinot Noir is, um, is a great introduction. Another wine that I would recommend for young wine drinkers to try. Um, I think it's amazing. And so not as heavy as Cab and it has a wonderful palate for food. You can drink it with anything, you know, any, any food that you can think of, it works, you know. And uh, Dennis, you wanna go farther there? Yeah, this uh, wine was, um, we used 100% French oak barrels uh, when we're, we're aging this wine. It, the wine we select for the Chancon de Finale Pinot is a, is, is a 
combination of, of about five different vineyards, five different vineyards all yeah. here in the Sonoma Coast Russian River area. And we, yeah. um, we blend them all together, best, wine, best barrels together to produce this wine. And um, we, think it, we think it's a very representative of a, a, ca- a typical yeah, style pinot. Um, it's, it's probably one of the uh, food wines that we produce. It, you know, it will, it'll pair well with everything from, from uh, fish, chicken, uh, pork. Um, it's uh, it's uh, unlike some of the Zinfandels and the cabs and stuff we produce that are primary for, um, you, know, you know, stuff from the, from the savannah, I should say, you know, this stuff will, um, the Pinot you know, Pino pairs with a lot of different foods and, uh, and you'll find that it changes, uh, changes character with the different foods. And that's why you'll see. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely, uh, go ahead. Wine, wine, even with, you know, vegetarians that uh, partake in, you know, vegetarian, vegetarian dishes, this is a great wine to try because it's, uh, it has the acid and, um, I believe it has that light, same thing as a rosé. It's not overwhelming and um, mm. a little less alcohol content yeah. than some of the other bigger wines. So it's a beautiful <laughs> one, uh, especially young wine drinkers. I, I would encourage them to partake in Pinot Noir. Yeah, no, I can totally tell what you mean. It's, it seems like it could pair with a lot of different things. And red wine isn't always so versatile. Is that right, Dennis? Uh, that's true. I mean, uh, P- Pinot probably runs the gamut of uh, a number of different styles from mm-hmm. only uh, as light as uh, a, a rosé clear up to as dark as a, is, you know, a, a Malbec or something like that. It can get very dark. So it's how, the, how, how it's manipulated in the winemaking process. But as right. the, was stated earlier, the, the secret to good wine starts in the vineyards and, and we can't, we can't, we can't produce great wines without great grapes. And so that's, that's where it all begins, begins right, and, and right behind the vineyards, but that's where, that's where it starts. And we yeah. should say, we should also say that Pinot Noir is French Burgundy. And so the, 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 uh, the native grape for Pinot Noir in our country is Burgundy wine in France. And that is a noble grape that is grown in uh, in France, so when you when you, when you do your history, my shepherd, yeah, <laughs> your history, you will you will know that there is only one place that Pinot Noir came from, and that's France. So Burgundy is only French. Amazing. Only, yeah. So. So this came from one place that God. Rocco, what the heck? <laughs> we have a guest who's saying that her dogs are barking back at your dogs. And well, you, if that's not community, I don't know what it is. I'm just out here and he's just going crazy. Yeah. He's a two-year-old shepherd. Yeah. He is a, he is a dr- that, don't they? Uh, annoyed. Okay, go ahead. Um, oh, go ahead. Continue. No, I, I was just saying. So Burgundy has a place in the noble grape. Um, and so if, 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 if you think about, if you think about the perfect noble grape, it's one of those grapes that, you know, one of the vines that grow according to what God decreed, you know, for winemaking. And so we're, we're drinking God's fruit. And I always think about Peter as, as God's creation. That's it. I love it. Well, cheers to that. Dennis, thank you so much for accompanying us on this. And for after everything that you've been through, we so appreciate you being here. How about we so that? appreciate you prior to, prioritizing the cause. Thank you. I am thrilled to be able to cause it. Thank and Jonathan, you. stay on and we will um, come back with you later. We're going to talk to Jonathan about things that aren't particularly related to wine. If you want to um, add your questions to the chat now, we'll get back to that. Um, but first, we have a message. Um, our co-founder, Roger Daltrey of The Who, uh, as you know, he is in tour on tour in Cincinnati. So he's maybe on stage right now, probably. Um, but he wrote a message to all of you 
and he wants to thank you so much for joining us. Um, and that's him earlier today, right after he wrote this uh, heartfelt message that we're excited to hear. Um, and then we have our amazing board member, Rick French, um, who helps put this entire event together and he's going to read it out for you. Uh, he's been very involved with this. Uh, whole event and without him it wouldn't have happened. He's co-founder, chairman, and CEO of French West Vaughn, an award-winning PR agency. He's also a film producer and he's on the boards of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's helped us immensely with his connection to them and the Buddy Holly Educational Foundation, who you might know we work with um, very often. And he's a good friend of both Jonathan Kane and Roger Daltrey. Wow, lucky guy. So thank you so much, Rick French. Take it away with our message from Roger. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. And John, thank you for joining us tonight and prayers for your brother and Dennis. It's so great that you're out of the hospital. Um, you guys, I, I, I sent uh, Jonathan a text the other night and I said to him, and I mean this sincerely, there are rock stars who are people who are truly rock stars on the stage. And then there are rock stars, human beings who just do things like this and give of their time and their talents to help others just because they can. And that's who Jonathan Cain is. So um, we're all lucky to have him here today and let's all send a prayer for his brother. Um, that, that piano that, uh, that he, uh, he recorded these songs for us for this event, I believe, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, is the one in he and his wife Paula's church. And uh, on most Sundays when Journey is not on tour, uh, Jonathan sits behind that uh, piano and, uh, and, and his other passion is his faith-based music. He's got uh, several albums out in that regard. And I believe that's the piano that he sits behind most Sundays. And if I am guessing right, probably this morning. Jonathan there, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Okay, so, so I'll come back to him. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's correct. That's, that's correct, correct. I, okay. I, I, played, I played all day tonight. I played all day today. I, I assumed you did. I mean, yes, and, 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 uh, and Jonathan and, and with their tour schedule often try to accommodate Jonathan's schedule to get home so that, uh, that he and Paula can, can minister together and touch the lives of people. And, and that's just an incredible thing. And so, uh, Thank you. Thank you. yeah. So, so I had, uh, before, I, before I deliver this message from Roger, I want to thank uh, one other person, uh, Bill Francis, a friend of mine, um, who was instrumental in putting this event together. Uh, Bill is uh, a terrific human being who is also just a very charitable guy. He is who connected me to Jonathan and Dennis many years ago, and we all developed uh, close friendships. And so uh, without him, uh, this would not have come together. So Bill, thank you for your support of this event as well. And, uh, and now I want to just uh, pass on the message from Roger. Uh, we had him kind of waiting in the green room earlier, but when we rearranged the show so that uh, we have to close with finale, right? So um, when we rearranged the order of this thing, it, it precluded him from being able to come on live as he wanted to do. Um, they are playing the first show that they played in Cincinnati tonight in 43 years. Uh, in 1979, the Who lost uh, 11 members in a terrible tragedy there in a stampede. And so the band has not uh, come back to Cincinnati for many, many years and uh, decided to do this show tonight. So um, he is on stage right now, but he asked that we pass along this message. And, and that's that, uh, that he and Pete really wish that they could be here tonight. Uh, they do have several bottles of Jonathan and Dennis's wine backstage for enjoying either before or after the show. I'm not going to ask which one it'll be, but uh, he asked that I uh, extend the, their best wishes and thanks from the sincere bottom of his heart for supporting TCA. And, uh, and he said that the wine he's already partaken in some is absolutely excellent, so he will be buying some personally. And I hope everybody else will as well. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, he just wants to do what he can to reciprocate. He understands um, that Make-A-Wish is an incredible organization. We at Teen Cancer America have partnered with it in the past. And so if there is an opportunity for he or Pete or both uh, to repay the favor, uh, John, from uh, you 
being giving of your time and talents to this, um, they'd be happy to work with you to do so. So he asked me to please pass it on to you as a, as a, uh, a personal thank you. And so uh, with that said, he asked that everybody um, think lucky and be lucky. That is his typical sign off um, when, it, when he chats with people. And I'm sure as he goes out there and plays uh, Bob O'Reilly and, uh, and the rest of the Who catalog tonight that uh, he'll be thinking of all of us here and the good work that Teen Cancer America is doing. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing. My pleasure. So <clears throat> coming up, we have separate ways recorded from our Play It Back program artists, Sarah Carreras and JCR, and our last and the possibly most loved song by Jonathan from Jonathan. Um, but first, our guests want to hear more from you, Jonathan, yeah. um, about life in general, about you know, journey, music, anything that you want to share with us tonight, maybe, a, yeah, any, anything that, that motivated you to come here tonight, whatever you want to talk about. Well, first of all, um, I have seen 500,000 faces across the country, and uh, I've seen faces of gratitude, of restoration, of... Uh, you know, just getting back to normal and, uh, you know, mostly just gratitude for freedoms that have been restored. You know, it's, it's wonderful when you can ask the crowd, you can say, uh, did you miss us? You know, and they, they all cheer. And I said, we missed you, you know, and we have this exchange. We have this wonderful exchange. And I, I kind of, got to take the temperature of the country this this tour and i could say that i believe america's resetting and and restarting their lives and they're celebrating um the freedoms that were taken from them uh, the freedom of gathering freedom of worship uh freedom of rock show you know and and when you see it up close like i've seen it it's it's extraordinary and uh, I can only say it's positive. And, and the temperature of the country now is, is a positive reset to something greater. You know, let's move on from this. Let's move on. America is resilient. And what I saw on the 500,000 basis was resilience. I saw a spirit of of, of, you know, celebration. Let's celebrate what was taken from us and let's make this good. And it was an extraordinary experience uh, to sell out, you know, almost 40 shows and play for half a million people. I saw the faces and I can tell you that we're on a good pattern. We're on a good move. We're on a course that is going to, uh, we're going to heal. We're on a healing. And, and I think that um, uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I hope you're right. Really I hope you're right, Jonathan. I really hope you are. I believe um, that's true. You. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're right. We have a question in the chat. Um, okay. Is your red piano still in the Hall of Fame? Can you yes. answer? Yes. I, I went and visited the Hall of Fame wow. uh, last week. And they said it was still intact. They didn't have it out there. And I will be back to play that red piano. So yes, stay tuned. I love stay that. tuned. They're, gonna, they're gonna let me know. Amazing. Tell us yeah. about that, about the hall the rock and roll hall of fame, of course. I mean it was several years ago now that you've been in it, right? Yeah, uh, they have been extraordinary uh with journey and and um have been a friend of journey and and, and they say it's my house and welcome back mm -hmm. to your, and I had the privilege to uh, play Cleveland, you know, and then stay the night. And I said, I found out it was Journey Fan Day. Can you oh, believe really? it? No, the next day oh my after God. Cleveland, uh, the show in Cleveland was Journey Fan Day. So we found it out uh, by, by accident. I 
talk to somebody and and they said, oh, you need to go sign an autograph. So I just showed up unannounced and 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 spent an hour uh, at the Hall of Fame signing autographs. And it was extraordinary. Uh, the fans were so appreciative. And I haven't signed autographs like that. I have, we don't do meet and greets because we're in a COVID lockdown. And sadly, our tour was canceled because of a COVID thing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one of the band members came down with COVID and I just, yeah, this is one of the things that you always dread when you go on the road, you just go, well, how are we gonna do this, you know? And it didn't happen to us. And um, thankfully it was 36 shows in, so 38 shows, whatever we did. Uh, but the, the bands in Cleveland were extraordinary. And um, I loved, seeing everybody and they were grateful and i do this for the fans honestly i do it for the fans um you know i've been doing this for 50 years i'm 72 i should be retired but i love our fans so much um that i would not let them down that's and beautiful that's what you doing. wow thank you and i know that it means a lot to the fans to hear that you know because sometimes as a fan you wonder um, what it matters yeah. and the love that you direct towards someone. So yeah. that is- And we have a new album coming out. So yeah. we, have, we, have yes. the new, we have the new album, Freedom, coming out uh, in July. Coming out. And we're celebrating 50 years next year. Amazing. Where can people find it? Everywhere that there is music? I'm sorry? Where can people find it? Everywhere that there is music? It will be- um, BMG uh, at the end of July. So we're, we're still a ways away. You have a single out. We have a single out right now. Uh, it's called You Get the Best of Me. Uh, and uh, sorry about my dog. That's uh, he, okay. We he, all are dog people here. <laughs> he never, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, now we have a thunderstorm coming. So uh, no, you're safe. it's beautiful thunder. But, um, Honestly, yeah. uh, it was an amazing tour. The fans showed up. I miss, and, and what's, what's great about the Hall of Fame was I was able to have a meet and greet. You know, one meet and greet for the whole tour was so special for me because I really miss that part of, you know, touring. Like I can't have a meet and greet. I can't have a, a signing, you know. And, and so I sat there for a good hour and some, I mean, we must have had 300 people and uh, it was so satisfying and, and gratifying uh, to see the fans and to hear their stories uh, and to hear the way they love Journey. And that means the, the world to me. That's so wonderful. That, that God would put me there, you know, for, yeah. for, for the day. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And I, I just love to hear about your connection with the fans. That's really, really exciting. Cause we've obviously, yeah, we we're big rock and roll fans here at Teen Cancer America. We work with a lot of rock and roll fans and we're, we're yeah, really no, it, 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 you know, when I, when, when I write songs, I write, I write for the fans. I mean, I, the fans are always first and foremost in my head, you know, people say, well, how did you write? Don't stop believing. I said, I wrote it for the fans. You know, um, when I thought of those lyrics, uh, I know there's a lot of small, there's a lot of small town girls and a lot of city boys and a lot of city boys. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I want yeah. to include them in, 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 in that song. Yeah, we all have our own stories with that amazing song. Um, so we have another question, if you don't yeah. mind. Okay. Um, this one is, I don't know, it might be controversial. I hope it doesn't. Okay. Hope it doesn't ruffle your feathers too much. But did you or did the band embrace Glee's cover of Don't Stop Believing at the outset? Can you share that with us? Yeah, I did. Oh, yay. I That's totally cool. did. My my kids loved it. Yeah. Were and they about that age said, watching Dad, Glee? That's, Dad, my kids said, Dad, that's going to be huge. You know, and they said, you don't know how big it's going to be. And I, I didn't know. And then, then I went to the Grammy Awards and they almost won the Grammy, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank goodness, uh, you know, uh, Train won for Hey Soul Sister. Uh, mm -hmm. My goodness. Uh, 
but it was amazing and I'm grateful for it. Yeah. And I, I was honored and touched by it. It was touching, you know, when anytime somebody can reimagine something you created um, and do it in such a way that was, it was very, very, very clever and very good. And it was artful and, you know, and, and soulful. And I, I, uh, hundred percent endorsed it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Yep. What a yep. positive outlook on that. Yep. Uh, and leading into the most perfect segue I could have asked for, um, our next few songs are going to include that most amazing hit that we all love so much. Um, and first we have from our play it back artists, Sarah Carreras and JCR separate ways. Enjoy all everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. We'll be back with you in a moment. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm JC. And we're here with the Play It Back music program powered by Teen Cancer America. And we are both leukemia survivors. Yeah, and we'll be singing separate ways. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Stand. Worlds apart, heart broken in two, two, two. Sleepless nights, losing ground, I'm reaching for you, you.
guys, Jonathan came from Journey. I'm back again with a song of encouragement, a song my father gave to me when I was discouraged and thought of giving up. It was a phone call, a late night phone call. He said, son, I've always had a vision for you. I know there's a lot of folks out there with a vision. Oh, a dream. So this song's about permission to dream. Like my father was such an inspiration to me. My dad said, don't stop believing. Just a small town girl Living in a lonely world Oh, she took the midnight train Going anywhere Just a city boy Born and raised in South Detroit He took the midnight train Going anywhere Smoke arrow, and spent a while in cheap perfume. For a smile, they could share the night. It goes on and on and on and on. Strangers waited. Open up the boulevard, their shadows searching in the night. Yeah. Working hard to get my fill Everybody wants a thrill Paying anything to roll the dice Just one more time Some will win, some will lose Some are born a single blues Stop, team. Can't sell America. Never stop.
I think you're muted, Jonathan. Jonathan, you got to unmute. I'm here. Awesome. Hi. I'm here. So, so that's one of those songs that my dad inspired. And, um, yeah. you know, I'm so blessed to uh, have brought it to the world. Um, I wrote it down you know, five years before the time uh, that the album came out and I had it in my lyric book and it was just an extraordinary. Uh, and my father got to see me in Chicago in 1982. And I said to him, you gave me this advice and I wrote a song about it and I'm gonna buy you a condo. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought him a condo. And you know he uh, he was uh, he was a major part of my life, my father. So I would say my dad matters, and I hope your dad matters, and uh, all the dads in this world need prayers. Yeah, they do. They I have a beautiful story. thunderstorm coming on. Uh, anyway, um, beautiful. Story. I think of my father with that song. And, and no, that's a dad song to his son. Yes. yes. So all of the yeah, all of the sons dangerous. out there, and all of the daughters out there that have a vision, have a dream, um, can get on that midnight train going anywhere. And if you have cancer, and if you're in pain, you can get on that midnight train going anywhere. You're not stuck where you are, and miracles happen. And people are praying for you. People are praying for you like me, like, like people all around the world. Uh, they're praying for people in pain. Uh, people are praying for people with uh, chronic illness. Um, we call upon the angels from the north, the south, east, and the west to cover you, to heal you, and to restore you. And we block every evil intention of anything that would come into your cell, anything that would come into your being. And, and we replace it with the name of Jesus. Thank you for sharing so much of yourself today, Jonathan. Thank you for coming on with us and spending this amazing, amazing intimate time together. I'm so grateful to you. Young people that we help will be so grateful to you. And thank you for sharing your beautiful finale wines with you. We appreciate you so much. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm sorry about my shepherd. He never, he never barks like that, but <laughs> we love it. No, we love it. We are such okay. people at Teen Cancer America. It happens to us constantly in our Zoom meetings. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Teen Cancer America event without a dog barking. I promise you that. Without a dog barking and the thunder, you know, going off. Okay. That was but, a cool addition. Yeah. You know, rock yeah. and roll. Whatever. Well, there's a song, there's a song on a new worship album I have coming out called Beautiful Thunder. Uh, it's my fourth worship album. And it'll be out at the end of May. So so check it out. It's called The Rise. We'll keep an eye out for it. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you. We appreciate you. You have made God a huge bless. difference for teens and young adults with cancer. God bless. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, you have the donation link. You have the raffle link. You have our wine link. Um, make sure to order any wine that you want to um, before May 31st so that all of the proceeds from those that are coming to Teen Cancer America can get to us. Um, and let us know um, what you thought about today's event. You can always email us at events at teencanceramerica.org. Um, share the wine link with your networks, please. You can find us on socials at Teen Cancer America or on Twitter at Teen Cancer USA. You can also follow our newsletter if you just want to email that same email events at teencanceramerica.org. We can get you all of the information that you need on that. Um, we've raised a great amount of money for teens and young adults with cancer through this fundraiser. And we're so grateful to you for being a part of it and for spending what was a really, really fun couple of hours um, with us and with Jonathan Kane of Journey. So awesome. Um, that was a blast. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for coming. We hope that you enjoyed it and um, hopefully you'll sign off and blast Journey for the rest of the night and uh, have a good time with your loved ones. Thank you.